Today is the 18th of October, 2009, and Mark is going to be working with me to look up some scriptures. In fact, Mark, you might want to be finding Job, the um, 40th chapter of Job. Now, tonight's message at the Weatherby House Church is entitled, The Universe is shouting of a creator. The universe is shouting of a creator. As many of you know, we have moved. Uh, we still are in uh, Weatherby, Missouri, but now we're actually in the little town of Weatherby. Before we lived out in the country on some acreage, we have sold the acreage, and now, just across the street from us, we're out of town, and so we are now in the town of Weatherby, but we're on the very outskirts of Weatherby, and across the street from us is like a forest. And we can look out our living room window and see beautiful, beautiful colors of the fall, the changing colors of the trees during this time of season is remarkable. And Today we were able to take a little ride out in the country of Cameron, Missouri and we went to a reservoir and as we went into this area of many lakes it was like the Lake of the Ozarks. The gorgeous trees, the fish jumping up out of the water, the bass, the catfish out there. And we were looking up in the sky and seeing we have several eagles up in this area. And we saw two or three eagles today soaring in the wind. And uh, we see as we were driving out in the country we saw one farm that had a number of sheep. And we saw a lot of cattle and the golden grains of wheat harvest that's going on right now and they're harvesting the corn and they're harvesting the soybeans. What a beautiful, beautiful time of year. And that sort of prompted me to think about how God has left his footprint on this earth as a demonstration of who he is. There's a song that is entitled For the Beauty of the Earth. Now we're going to read uh, in Job. Uh, we know the story of Job and his three friends and how that they came to Job after his calamity and they pointed accusatory fingers at him. And then we know how that God himself came and asked questions of Job and made affirmations about himself and who he was. Now there's a scripture in Romans that says all men are without excuse before God. So that when the reprobate, unrepentant sinner stands before God, he can't say to God, you made me do it. How many of us have heard little children, maybe as they grow old they learn it from somebody else and they'll say, the devil made me do it. The devil made me do it. That's kind of what Eve did when she was questioned. Adam said, the woman made me do it. And Eve said, the devil made me do it. But we're going to see that God has, in his miraculous wonders, left a footprint of his um, creation you know, there's so many people in science today that deny a creator. They deny creation. They talk about all the way from spontaneous generation to cellular uh, division, taking a single cell or the amoeba cell and dividing it, and how it just happened in a slime of, of uh, just some kind of a slime pit somewhere. Something happened. Who knows what? 
and that slime ended up being you and me. <laughs> okay. Okay, Mark, let's start reading down through um, the 40th chapter of Job, beginning with verse 1. Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproveth God, let him answer it. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay my hand upon my mouth. Once have I spoken, but I will not answer. Yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. Then answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind. Notice the... Now, what is a whirlwind? Well, a whirlwind is like a tornado. And so again, the Lord is showing his own self out of the tornado here. He answered Job out of the tornado and said, Gird up thy loins now like a man. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. Wilt thou also disannul my judgment? Wilt thou condemn me, that thou mayest be righteous? Hast thou an arm like God, or canst thou thunder with a voice like him? Deck, now, deck thyself now with majesty and excellency, and array thyself with glory and beauty. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath, and behold every one that is proud in the basin. Look on every one that is proud, and bring him low, and tread down the wicked in their place. Hide them in the dust together, and bind their faces in secret. Then will I confess unto thee that thine own right hand can save them. Behold now behemoth which I made with thee, he is grass as an ox. Now the Lord is going to go through and talk about his creation and how he created these and their their purposes and so on. Lo now, his strength is in his loins, and his horse is in the navel of his belly. He moveth his tail like a cedar, the sinews of his stones are wrapped together. His bones are as strong pieces of brass, his bones are like bars of iron. He is the chief of the ways of God, he that made him can make his sword to approach unto him. Surely the mountains bring him forth food, where are where all the beasts of the field play. He lieth under the shady trees in the covert of the reed and fen. The shady trees cover him with their shadow, the willows of the brook compass him about. Behold, he drinketh up a river and hasteth not. He trusteth that he can draw up Jordan into his mouth. He taketh it with his eyes. His noise pierces through the snares. Now we're going to go on to 41. Canst thou draw out Leviathan with a hook, or his tongue with a cord, which thou lettest down? Canst thou put, it, canst thou put an hook into his nose, or bore his jaw through with a thorn? Will he make many supplications unto thee? Thou take him for a servant forever. Will he make a covenant with thee? Wilt thou play with him as with a bird, or wilt thou bind him for thy maiden? Shall the companions make a banquet? Shall they part him among the merchants? Canst thou fill his skin with barbed irons or his head with fish spears? Lay thy hand upon him. Remember the battle. Do no more. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? None is the fierce. The dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand before me? Who hath prevented me that I should repay him? Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. I will not conceal his parts, nor his power, nor his comely proportion. Who can discover the face of his garment, or who can come to him with his double bridle? Who can open the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible round about him. His scales are his pride, shut up together as with a closed seal. 
One is so near to another that no air can even come between them. They are joined one to another. They stick together that they cannot be sundered. By his kneesings the light does shine, and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning lamps and sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils go a smoke as out of a seething pot or cauldron. His breath kindles coals and the flame goeth out of his mouth. In his neck remains strength and his sorrow is turned into joy before him. The flakes of his flesh are joined together. They are firm in themselves. They cannot be moved. His heart is as firm as a stone. Yea, as hard as a piece of the nether millstone. When he raiseth up himself, the mighty are afraid. By reason of breakings, they purify themselves. The sword of him that layeth at him can't hold the spear, the dart, nor the bark. Have he esteemeth iron as straw and brass as rotten wood. The arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones are turned with him into stubble. Darts are counted as stubble. He laugheth at the shaking of a spear. Sharp stones are under him. He spreads sharp paint, uh, pointed things upon the mire. He maketh the deep to boil like a pot. He maketh the sea like a pot of ointment. He maketh a path to shine after him. One would think the deep to be hoary. Upon earth there is not his like who is made without fear. He beholdeth all the high things. He is a king over the children of, the, of pride. Now, it's talking about the Leviathan. And God knows all about him because he created him. And Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, as I will speak, I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. That should be the response of every sinner before God. But we know that that is not the response of every sinner before God. And we know that any sinner that repents is granted repentance by God. Now, um, the Lord has made it very clear about His creation and um, you know some of his um, acclamations let's go back to the 38th um, 38th chapter of uh, Job Mark um, here's a little bit more of God describing his own creation Read verse 4, Mark. Where wast thou when I laid the foundation of the earth, declare if thou hast understanding? <coughs> Excuse me. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest, or who hath stretched the lines upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy, or who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth as it as if it had issued out of the womb. When I made the cloud, the garment thereof, and the thick darkness a swaddling band for it, and break up for it my decreed place, and set bars and doors. And said, Hitherto shalt thou come, but no further, and here shall thy proud ways be saved. Hast thou commanded the morning since thy days and caused the day spring to know his place that it might take hold of the ends of the earth that the wicked might be shaken out of it? It is turned as clay to the seal and they stand as a garment. Verse 16 Hast thou entered into the springs of the sea or hast thou walked in the search of the depths? Have the gates of death been opened unto thee or hast thou seen the doors of the shadow of death? 
Now let's go on to the 22nd verse. Hast thou entered into the treasures of the snow? Or hast thou seen the treasures of the hail? Now, read verse 24. By what ways the light parted, which scattereth the east wind upon the earth? Who hath divided a water course for the overflowing of waters or a way for the lightning of thunder? To cause it to rain on the earth where no man is, on the wilderness wherein there is no man. Verse 28 says, Hath the rain a father, or who hath begotten the drops of dew? Out of whose womb came the ice and the hoary frost of heaven, and who hath gendered it? The waters are hid as with a stone, and the face of the deep is frozen. Canst thou bind the sweet influence of Pleiades, or loose the bands of Orion? 33 says, Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? Canst thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? 34. Canst thou lift up thy voice to the clouds that the abundance of waters may cover thee? Canst thou send lightnings that they may go and say unto them, Here we are. Who hath put wisdom in the inward parts, or who hath given understanding to the heart? <clears throat> 39. Will thou hunt the prey for lions, or fill the appetite of the young lions? When they couch in their dens, and abide in the covert to lie in wait. 41. Who provided for the raven his food? And his young ones crying to God, they wonder for lack of meat. Now, we could go on and on, but this is the great answer to God, Job, regarding his creation. I mean, there's another whole chapter, chapter 39, which the Lord is speaking to Job and his friends regarding what he has done. You read verse 1. We, you, we ought to go on and read some of this. Now, tonight we're talking about the fact that the universe is shouting of a creator. Knowest thou the time when the wild goats the rock bring forth? Or canst thou mark when the hinds be calf? Canst thou number the months um, that they fo- or knowest thou the time when they bring forth? Now let's go on down to the uh, sixth verse. Whose house I have made the wilderness and the barren land his dwellings. Eight, the range of the mountains and his pasture, and he searches for every green thing. Verse 9. Will begin a corn be willing to serve thee or abide by thy crib? Thirteen says, Gavest thou the goodly wings unto the peacocks? or wings and feathers under the ostrich. Now let's go on down to uh, um, verse 26. Doth the hawk fly by thy wisdom and stretch your wings toward the south? Doth the eagle mount up at the command and make her nest on high? She dwelleth and abideth on the rock, upon the crag of the rock, in the strong place. So we're going to stop there now. God has left his footprint all over the universe. He's left his footprints in the stars, in the planets, in the ocean, all of the amphibians, and all the thousands and thousands of sea dwelling creatures he's left his footprints like I said earlier in the beauty of the earth he's left, he's left his footprints in the cell of man and in molecules and atoms he's left his footprints in nature in every imaginable way but there are still those that are not denying the existence of a creator the universe is shouting so loud of the Creator that how could anyone deny it? Well, the answer is also found in the Bible. For one to see the relative uh, uh, 
total uh, asinine uh, doctrine of Darwinianism and to uphold it is a sign of their spiritual condition. That's all it is. If they attempt to set man on the throne, deny that they are accountable to God. Now let's go to the first chapter of Corinthians, Mark, and we're going to read here why those who have seen God's creation and the fact that the universe is shouting of a creator, but yet they still oppose it. First chapter of Corinthians, you said? Yeah. Read verse 19. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Who is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. We preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world, and things which are despised, have God chosen. Yea, and the things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. But no flesh should glory in his presence. Well, you know, God's elect is going to glory in the Lord. We know that. But those who are not his people are going to try to even deny the existence of the very creator who created all of this. But yet, now let's go back to Romans. And Mark, I want you to read in the first chapter of Romans. Um, Read verse uh, 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things which are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were there, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. You know, there are so many professors out there: doctors of science, doctors of biology, doctors of microbiology, doctors. Uh, I mean, neurophysicists, <laughs> uh, doctors of chemistry that deny the Creator God. They profess themselves to be wise. But what did they do in verse 23, Mark? They changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like a corruptible man, and the birds and four footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. He changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Now we're going to make a few comments about that. Oftentimes this passage of Scripture is used only to condemn uh, the homosexual and the lesbians. But this also is condemning professors and those who are upholding Darwinism and evolutionism and who are denying 
the Word of God and professing that they are wiser than God Himself. And that includes an awful lot of people in the world today, including our own president, who thinks that God is sitting in His chair. To deny the Word of God in word, thought, and deed they profess themselves to be wise. They think they're wiser than the one who created them. Because their foolish heart has been darkened. They believe not the word of the truth. I mean, when you have even people like John Hagee saying that Jesus did not come as a Messiah for the Jews, and as the Bible says, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Your foolish heart becomes darkened when they come against the Word of God. But when we, again, the way we started this message was the fact that the beauty of the earth and the magnificence of the earth and the colors and the many creation created things that God has shown us are crying so loudly of a creator and it holds man without excuse before his maker and someday that very thing that has been created those people are going to cry for the mountains and the rocks to fall upon them and to hide them from their creator because they know that they are without excuse in fact, Romans says that they can see even his eternal Godhead. That means that they can see that he's Trinitarian in nature. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We as created beings have a, a spirit, a soul, and a body. And we are responsible for God to our Creator just like Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden tried to pass it off. Adam tried to pass it off to Eve and Eve tried to say the devil made me do it. And that, what do you think these people are going to say to God when they come to stand before Him? Probably you made me do it. Why did you create me this way? The same thing that we find in the ninth chapter of Romans is their unrighteousness with God. God forbid. The potter has power over the clay. But yet we know that God has left his footprint on this universe to show that he is the great creator of it all. Father, we pray that you would take this message and use it for your glory and your glory alone. We pray in Christ's name. Amen.